front. Motorists know they have to poke along behind you until they're given the lane. Geller and I rode through Amstel Park and stopped at a T-shaped intersection to check our bearings. In the U.S., this kind of intersection wouldn't cause most drivers more than a moment's thought. A road from the park dead-ended at a boulevard where cars in both directions had the right of way. Here it was more complicated because an off-street bicycle path came through the park and intersected with another path that paralleled the boulevard. An American traffic engineer would see plenty of potential for conflict. I watched an older couple in a station wagon prepare to take, the right off, take, take a right off the boulevard to drive through the park. They halted just before the intersection as the woman in the passenger seat craned her neck to make sure no one was coming down the bike path to the right of the car. Seems funny, huh? <laughs> wait. <laughs> as it turned out, they had to wait at least 30 seconds while all of the cycle traffic cleared. I watched closely, struck by how not even a hint of irritation came across their faces. What do you think would happen here? They clearly recognized it as just part of the dance. We rode along toward a bike and pedestrian bridge and watched a man on a bike with a large wooden box on the front slowly pedal up and over the span. Three young kids were seated in the box, staring out like little potentates. There's the answer, cried Geller, to the woman who say, say, how am I going to get around? You can do it. Well, that would be an interesting sell to your minivan driving mom back in the States. Would stay-at-home parents of little kids learn to appreciate combining their exercise with a pollution-free trip to the store if they had a bike that could handle their groceries and their progeny? Well, you know, since I wrote that, I see. Joseph here has one, Buck Feets, of course, and they're selling, yeah, they've sold dozens of them up in Portland and you start seeing them around town. Um, so, uh, you know, it is something that uh, is starting to catch root, although, um, you know, we're a long way from them being ubiquitous by any means. The other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about, and the other passage is about, uh, is, is about culture. You know, I, I've talked about some about you know, infrastructure, and we can certainly talk about education and what kind of traffic rules, how we design our cities. But, you know, I think culture is an important part of it that we like to think in America that we're all kind of, you know, lone wolf, Gary Cooper, you know, I go my own path, you know, the western frontier sort of thing. And, yeah, we are somewhat of an individualistic culture. But, you know, the truth is, folks, we're more sheep than lone wolves. Uh, we're very, you know, we, we follow fads. We're very much uh, creatures of our culture. And for so many years, we have so marginalized bicycles as a form of transportation. You know, 60, or I'm sorry, 40% um, of the trips in America are two miles or less. You know, not much of a distance. Two thirds of those trips are by car. I mean, we just sort of, got in a habit and if you're on a bike it seems kind of wimpy it's like anybody see the the 40 year old virgin that Mary movie uh, what did the the protagonist of that movie how did he get around town anybody remember bike yeah so you know ride a bike and you're impotent and uh, so I think you know a lot of I mean one thing that's fascinating to me about the urban bike culture that you're I'm seeing really develop and and take place. It's an image of vitality and strength, you know, kind of artistic things, very hip. I'm not like that, but a lot of people who are, are. I've observed this. And that is, I think, you know, is an important thing to change the image of it. And one thing I've been struck watching it, and I see this in Portland mostly because that's where I live, is the way that the culture as the whole bike culture develops, it just spins out into very unusual and unpredictable ways. And excuse me for a second because I did not remember to bookmark where this was, but I'll, I'll find it here in a little, little bit, yes. Um, Any more water? No, I'm fine. One of the things I found most intriguing about Portland's exploding bike scene was how it could build community in the unlikeliest of ways. For example, I'd been reading on the shift list, that's a listserv in Portland that, uh, you know, kind of has information about bike events and stuff like that, for more than a year about people moving, as in literally moving from one residence to another by bicycle. It was hard for me to think of a more unimpeachable use for an internal combustion engine than renting a truck to carry furniture across town. 
but then I decided to help out on a bike move. Babs Adamski, who worked at a used bookstore at the Central Library, was moving out of a house she shared with a couple of roommates into a smaller home about six miles away. She had only a fraction of the furniture of the typical suburban homeowner, but she did possess a bed, a chest of drawers, a couch, and a lot of boxes, among other things. I showed up around 11 a.m. and found that I wasn't alone. There were more than 20 of us, and we spent more time eating donuts and drinking coffee than carrying furniture. With so many people around, getting the stuff out to the bikes was pretty quick. The thing is, I've never seen a truck move attract 50 or 20 friends, explained Steve Kirkendell, a computer programmer, as he cinched boxes into his bike trailer. It's like a barn raising, added Timo Forsberg, who managed to secure the mattress to his trailer. Everybody loves to help their friends, but they don't realize that until they do it. The best part, however, was after we started on our six-mile journey. There were 18 cyclists with loaded trailers and another three or four of us with various items on racks and in panniers. Despite the drizzly weather, we enjoyed the surprised looks and smiles of onlookers. And it really pisses me off that I didn't mention here. I mean, it's like a par I should have put this in the book. I mean, it really is like a parade, and you really feel you're in a parade. You're creating a spectacle. And for the most part, people are really just intrigued by it because, you know, it's just a fun sight. I mean, I, I saw just one angry motorist who yelled something after being delayed at one intersection. There's something about being out there on the road with a bunch of funny-looking, goofy vehicles filled with stuff hanging out, explained Forsberg, who kept up a steady stream of panther during the ride. Do you think it makes my bike look fat? He asked in mock concern at one point as his trailer swayed back and forth under the weight of the mattress. At the other end, we had the trailers unloaded in a flash. I only carried two armfuls of things. Then we started eating pizza and drinking.